Hi, welcome everyone. We're just going to take a few minutes to get started as people start to filter into the digital room here. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us uh, today's for uh, today's webinar on um, the housing element and general plan annual progress reports. Um, my name is Helen Campbell. I am a senior planner here at the uh, Governor's Office of Planning and Research, and I will be moderating today's panel. So um, just as a quick overview, this is the second year that OPR and the Housing and Community Development Department, HCD, have collaborated together to provide an overview of the requirements to submit the general plan and the housing element annual progress reports. These are two separate re reports that are required of all jurisdictions. Um, so OPR, just as a quick overview, is the state's comprehensive planning agency, and HCD is the state's housing agency. And so together, we're working to meet the state's planning priorities and tackling the housing and climate crisis um, in the state. And so just as a quick overview, the state's planning priorities are broadly to promote infill development and equity, to promote compact development, and to ensure that development protects natural resources and working lands. And so I uh, just wanted to give folks just kind of some context as to, you know, what we're all here trying to, 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 to achieve together. So the purpose of today's webinar is really to demystify the process and to provide guidance on the changes in both the law and the submission process for both reports for 2022. OPR has improved the electronic submission process this year um, for the general plan APRs, and uh, we now provide automatic confirmations via SurveyMonkey. And so Brianne's gonna go ahead and give you an overview of that new change. And there's been a few legal changes um, for the requirements to the housing element annual progress report. So HCD staff is going to cover those changes in the law and in the um, submission requirements. So we're going to go ahead and cover the, the requirements for both for both annual progress reports and do a compare uh, a comparison of the differences so that hopefully it just um, uh, results in, in less confusion for, for all of you. And so uh, this process of submitting a progress report to the state is really designed to provide transparency and accountability to the public regarding the process for, regarding the progress on not just um, how you are updating your plans, but how you're implementing your general plan and your housing element. So this isn't just, you know, a box to, to check for the state. Um, it's really about, you know, public accountability. And so that's why we require that the annual progress reports be submitted to the local um, legislature for approval before it gets to the state. But we'll go over that in the webinar. So we at the state also use the annual progress reports to ensure that local governments are also on track and implementing their plans. And um, with the housing element annual progress report, there are also, it's also a requirement to turn that in um, in order to apply for many state funding opportunities. So just a little bit more of an incentive there. Um, so just a few housekeeping um, things I wanted to cover. Today's webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on OPR's YouTube page. Um, all of the slides that we share today will be shared with all of you via email. And uh, just to let you know, we have disabled the chat function and are hoping to have all of the audience members type in their questions into the Q&A box. And um, we're going to go ahead and answer some live questions at the end of both presentations, but we will answer some questions in a written format throughout the process. So feel free to go ahead and, and type your question into the Q&A. If you like a question that someone else has, has asked, feel free to also upvote uh, the question and so it gets to the top of the list. Um, and great, I know Lee Kimball is 
testing it out and we know that it's working. So that's good to know. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the rest of the panel. Um, Brianne, go ahead. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss it over to Brianne and then we're gonna pop corn around. So Brianne, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Helen. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I am Brianna Sakawa. I'm an associate planner on the uh, planning team at OPR, and uh, I am helping co-lead this APR process uh, with HCD. So happy to be here with all of you. And I'll popcorn it over to Alyssa. Hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa Montanez, and I'm a special assistant here at OPR, and I am here to help with the technical and logistical side of today's webinar, and I will pass it to Tom. Uh, hey, everyone, this is Tom Brinkheis, Senior Policy Specialist with the Department of Housing and Community Development. I'm excited to be uh, assisting and help uh, uh, partnering with OPR on uh, uh, this uh, general plan and housing element uh, webinar. Um, so thanks to everyone for, uh, for joining, and I will send it on over to Josh. Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua Segi. I'm a housing policy analyst at the Department of Housing and Community Development. I'm part of Tom's team, helping to provide technical assistance and review the housing element APRs. I'm going to pass it off to Eric. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric. I am also a housing policy analyst at HCD, working in the housing policy development division. I'll be reviewing APRs this year, housing element APRs this year and presenting some slides on the APRs um, in just a bit. And I'll pass off to Ashley. Hi, my name is Ashley Sanchez. I'm also a housing policy analyst with HCD from the housing policy division. Um, my team and I also review how um, the APRs for the housing element side. And for today, I'll be note taking and um, very happy to meet all of you guys. Okay, uh, that is the panel for today. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we are going to get started with the general plan APR overview for today. Share my screen. Um, and uh, can everyone see my screen? Okay, great. We see the um, presenter view. There we go. Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, today we are going to be going over the general plan APR report uh, requirements, suggestions for, com uh, for content, and also going over how to actually submit your general plan APR. So uh, before we get into the actual general plan APR itself, I want to go back to what an actual general plan is um, so it is a document that contains the long-term vision for a jurisdiction and its contents should be consistent with the general plan guidelines, which OPR creates and uh, updates about every seven to 10 years. There are a total of nine required elements, two which have special conditions, which is the environmental justice, uh, which is typically for those uh, who have already identified disadvantaged communities within their area. And the air quality element is really for those located within the San Joaquin Air Pollution Control District. So, um, so what is the actual general plan APR? So it's a document that is uh, describing how the general plan was implemented over a given year. So for the general plan, it can be for a fiscal or a calendar year. And it's also important to note that it must be presented to the local legislature uh, for review and acceptance before uh, being submitted to the state. It's typically in this fashion, but we'll go into uh, reasons what, uh, what happens uh, if there's any issues. So we do have a deadline for the APRs in general. So all jurisdictions, whether it's a city, county, a charter city, um, must submit their uh, APR, this is for general plan and housing element APR, to OPR and HCD by April 1st. So as far as actual content, 
there are just some things that we ask everyone to be mindful of. There is no standardized form or format for the general plan APR, and it doesn't need to include all the elements. And the, uh, the, also the amount of detail is also up to the jurisdiction um, themselves. So we also, therefore, that's why it's also acceptable uh, for a jurisdiction to borrow content from other reports that that jurisdiction uh, may have developed for a performance report, a budget report, or a state of the city report. Uh, we do uh, have to remind everyone that even if you are undergoing a comprehensive update to your general plan, you still have to report what your planning activities are in your general plan APR, because uh, that is what o uh, OPR is looking for, showing what your process and your what the activities are going uh, are co going on in the calendar or fiscal year. So. Um, you will be able to find all the examples we're going to give in the next few slides in our memo that will be posted online. Um, but we do recommend for the actual content uh, to have a strong and very clear introductory uh, section that uh, provides all of the identification information that we would need, such as uh, not, uh, table of contents, date of last general plan update, the date the document was accepted by a local jurisdiction. And uh, we also ask that the document includes a description of any general plan implementation actions that occurred that year. We are really looking for uh, content that demonstrates that the um, that it it's consistent with the general plan guidelines developed by OPR. And we also want a description um, uh, discussing local legislative priorities for land use decision making in the year being described. So this can uh, take the form of emergency or ordinances and so forth. So um, other things that can be included would be uh, goals, policies, objectives, standards, or other plan proposals that needed changing. So this can be added, deleted, amended, or, or something else. And uh, again, I just wanna stress that the level of detail that you want to include is really up to you. So you can get really specific, for example, pointing out like uh, master plan creation, environmental ass assessments and so forth. So other additional content that you can also include would be uh, interagency or intergovernment coordination that occurred. Uh, implementation mitigation measures from uh, final EIRs or negative declarations for general plans and equity planning considerations for uh, typically underserved groups. So these are uh, ethnic groups or socioeconomic populations that are just generally underserved. And so uh, we, we're really excited when we see content that describes those activities. And uh, other content to also consider uh, providing uh, if you have the capacity to do so is um, as, as a summary for how your community has uh, promoted infill development and while also, especially in uh, underserved areas, while also balancing uh, uh, preserving resources that are cultural or historic. The other thing we also look for is how your community has uh, sought to protect resources. This can be environmental or agricultural or any other natural resource. And uh, information about economic development efforts that have been done by your jurisdiction are helpful as well as um, actions or plans to monitor long-term growth. So uh, this can mean population growth, employment growth, and just looking toward the future and making sure their actions are uh, accounting for those changes. So other uh, more specific actions that you can describe in your document, uh, this can be, you know, outline department goals, objectives, activities, and responsibilities. This can be looking uh, more analysis on trends going on in your jurisdiction. And then also comments that were received from boards and commissions 
uh, while implementing your general plan, uh, uh, content about customer service and how that's operating and ways to improve that. We also have uh, also with the influx of money that we're hearing about lately, and I'm sure everyone is very excited about uh, any content talking about grant administration for land use activities is uh, very is welcome as well. And uh, not, not the, and um, also just as important as all these other actions would be uh, a technical um, or technology review um, such as GIS or other technical uh, tools that are being included in your processes. So the um, actual uh, way to submit your OPR has changed a little bit as Helen alluded to earlier in our presentation. Um, so we added a new way for the benefit of all jurisdictions, uh, a survey monkey uh, uh, form. It's, we call it the general plan APR submission form. And this is OPR's preferred method of submission for general plan APRs this year. We still are accepting general plan APRs by uh, email as well at the at opr.apr at opr.ca.gov. We're still uh, accepting APRs that way. So the next few slides, I'm gonna go over uh, the specific details of how to submit for each. So the first for the uh, submission form, uh, there will be questions that are asking us for some basic contact information, jurisdiction, identification information, such as, you know, what type of jurisdiction are you in your city, county, or are you city and a county? And then name of jurisdiction, you know, your city name or county name. And then the type of reporting period that uh, your document is describing. So it's going to be fiscal or calendar and also the year that you're describing. And then uh, last but not least, date of presentation or acceptance by a local legislative body. And we do accept plan dates as well. So as you'll see on the left, um, we have the link available in this presentation. And when you click on it, it will take you to uh, the, um, this form right here. And so this should, this should be the first image that you see. And as you can see, the first question is contact information. And toward the end, after you complete um, all the questions, then there are going to be two options that you can um, submit your, uh, your document in this form. The first is a typical uh, upload a Word doc or a PDF uh, here, and the file size limit is 16 MB. So please keep that in mind. And the second option, if the first is not available, to just simply put in a hyperlink into the box. Uh, so we do ask that no one send in a Google Doc hyperlink because we are unable to open those. So that's uh, how the form works. And if you require additional guidance, please feel free to see our step-by-step um, -step guide that is available online as well. And the second option um, that's available is email. So uh, we do ask that if you are going to uh, submit your general plan APR by email, uh, to also attach a cover letter that has all the information that we asked from the form. So things like contact information, jurisdiction identification information and so forth. So it's just this list here. And we do ask that if you do send an email, there's technically no file size limit, but it is, uh, we do ask to be mindful of the file size nevertheless. And uh, the, again, it's Microsoft PDF and we also accept hyperlinks this way. And so, um, so that's how to submit it to OPR. So to submit it to HCD, the two, it's the same um, method as it was last year, which is one, the online portal system that requires a special login or account setup. So I, uh, if you do not have that special login information, please contact HCD at the email that you see here. And also for the second option, um, we, you, it's still the same as ours where you attach it, uh, attach it by email and the email is apr at hcd.ca.gov. So uh, we have some reminders. Um, so one, there are no penalties if you are unable to submit your general plan APR to OPR past April 1st. We wanna reiterate there are no penalties. 
And the second thing we want to bring up is that you are technically allowed to um, submit the APR before holding your uh, before being reviewed by a local local legislative body or holding your approval process. But we do encourage you to uh, resubmit your general plan APR once you've done so. And then the last thing is that OPR is obligated to uh, notify a city or a county if your general plan has not been updated or revised within eight years. And then we have to contact attorney general if it has been uh, if it hasn't been done within 10 years. So uh, I just want to take a moment really quickly to just establish that there are some key differences between the general plan and the housing element of APR. So the um, deadline and the requirement to submit to OPR and HDD is the same for both, but the reporting year type, general plan APRs again allow fiscal or calendar, whereas the housing element APR is just calendar. And for the general plan APR, there are no format requirements where there are for the housing element APR. So I'll let uh, the house, um, HCD to go over those requirements. And then lastly, uh, as I've mentioned, this is the link uh, that we will be posting our memo and um, just general information about the general plan APR process at our site here. It's going to be under general plan information. There'll be a subsection called general plan annual progress report. That's where you'll find all this information. And uh, we also have the uh, HCD's link here as well for the annual progress reports. Okay, and that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, for holding your questions. <laughs> and uh, this is my contact information. So if you have any questions or concerns, please email me or at my uh, at the Brianne Masakad opr.ca.gov or the generic uh, APR OPR account. So um, thank you. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and hear from HCD. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for your interest in this online training for the Housing Element uh, Annual Progress Report, otherwise known as the Housing Element APR. My name is Eric. Um, I work for the Housing Policy Development Division here at HCD. Um, I'll be co-presenting these slides today with my colleague, Josh. And I'll just give an introduction to the Housing Element APR and walk through only two of the tables that are included in the APR form. And then I'll pass the mic to Josh. Um, and Tom, our other coworker, is available to answer questions in the chat and we'll be answering questions in the Q&A portion after we're finished. Um, so hopefully this presentation helps you to successfully submit your housing element APR for your jurisdiction this year. So hopefully during the webinar, you gain a stronger sense of the background and context behind the APR process. Um, some changes from the 2021 version of the housing element APR form um, against previous versions of the form, the benefits of completing the APR um, and overview of the various tables contained within the form, some helpful features of the form and um, how to submit your APR once you finished it. So backing up and giving some context, um, all jurisdictions in California, that is all cities and counties are required to prepare an annual progress report on the progress that they've made to implement um, their adopted housing elements. That requirement is located in section 65400 of the California government code. Um, and I'll drop a link in the chat when I'm finished if folks want to look at that section of the government code specifically. Um, but section uh, 65400 stipulates that the report must be submitted to both HCD and OPR. Um, and jurisdictions also have the requirement to complete a separate APR for the general plan, which OP our friends at OPR just um, described in their presentation. So two, two annual progress reports going to two separate entities. 
Um, the housing element APR is due each year on April 1st. So the 2021 APR is due to HGD and OPR in a few months on April 1, 2022. And for the 2021 APR form, the format of the form has not changed from um, the 2020 APR form, but there is one new requirement in there um, that has been added due to AB 2345, which we'll go over. Um, and like last year, you can upload the completed form directly to our database. Um, I'll drop that URL in the chat when I'm finished as well. Um, or you can email it to us at apr at hcd.ca.gov. And then um, for the housing element APR submission to OPR, um, please email that to them at their, their email address here, opr.apr at opr.ca.gov. Um, and that will be the completed Excel workbook. Um, yeah. So um, some of you might recall that the housing element APR form underwent major changes starting with the 2018 report. Prior to, prior to 2018, the housing element APR um, focused largely on reporting building permits that had been issued. This changed because in 2017, SB 35 and AB 879 amended the government code to include additional uh, requirements for the housing element APR. So the 2018 form incorporated those changes derived from those laws. Um, I won't go over those changes, but folks can refer to SB 35 and AB 879 that were passed in the 2017 legislative session if they want more information on that. Um, and then in 2020, AB 2345 added an additional requirement related to reporting on density bonus projects. So again, we revised the form to include those new requirements derived from that legislation. Um, the current APR form is available on the HCD website. And the APR form for 2017 and prior years is available by emailing us at apr at hcd.ca.gov. So before describing the APR form with its various tables, I'm just going to share some of the benefits of submitting an APR, that your housing element APR. So APRs are woven into numerous state oversight and funding programs. And so having up-to-date submission of APRs allows a jurisdiction to be eligible for some funding programs that require that up-to-date submission. So for example, the Caltrans Sustainable Communities Grant and the Permanent Local Housing Allocation or PLHA funding program. Um, APRs are also how jurisdictions report progress on meeting their regional housing need allocations for their various locations and implementing their housing elements. So it's a form of like accountability to the public and decision makers. Um, and the data from APR submissions is how HCD makes its SB 35 determinations, which you might know of as the streamlined ministerial approval process. And lastly, APR data helps us at HCD understand the successes and the challenges that jurisdictions are encountering um, when trying to meet their RENA allocations and um, uh, fulfill their housing elements. So giving an overview of the form just to orient you for the topics that are included in each table. Um, so the housing element APR form uh, contains tables A through H. Each of these tables represent a sheet within the APR form, which is itself an, ex an Excel workbook. Um, a detailed explanation of each table's requirements can be found in the in instructions tab, which is in that workbook. And the instructions there should be your definitive source for um, how to fill out the table correctly. First up, when you open up that workbook is going to be the Start Here tab. Um, you'll just enter the jurisdiction name, contact info, including the mailing address. Um, and you'll see here in this graphic, the, these yellow boxes here, um, that is conditional formatting in the form. The, 
uh, required cells are, are highlighted in yellow there. Um, and some cells only become yellow once uh, part of the row or table has been filled out. That is, once certain tables or rows start being completed, there are accompanying cells in that row that must that must be completed. So the yellow goes away when you've provided the requisite information. So any yellow that's in your APR um, workbook should be a flag for you to go to that cell and fill it out. Um, also to note, all tables have required fields in them, but they get triggered if you start to fill out the table. So if you have no activity to report in a table because it does not apply to your jurisdiction or your jurisdiction doesn't have activity to report from the reporting year that is relevant to that table, then just leave that table blank. There's no need to add any notes like, um, quote, like nothing to report or NA, something like that because this will cause the yellow highlighting to erroneously show up in your APR. The workbook also has an importer button. Um, what that button does is basically like launch a macro that uh, allows you to import data from prior years forms. Um, this is useful if you have housing developments that have moved through the planning slash building process beyond what was reported in the prior year's APR submission. And so you just need to add the additional activity that occurred for a project during the current reporting year. Um, so for example, you reported a project as being entitled during the previous reporting year and that's all. Um, but this current reporting year, it received a building permit. So that portion needs to be reported. Um, the importer will copy over all project information from last year's form, meaning you just need to complete that additional building activity that occurred. Um, also to note, the importer will copy most of the tables and you can delete any information copied by the importer um, if you need to by just typing control V. So table A, the first table um, in the workbook is for any development applications that have been completed during the, during the reporting year. Um, that includes applications for planning approval and applications for development permits. Um, applications for building permits are no longer required to be reported in table A. Cells in yellow, um, you can see that condi conditional format formatting occurring here. Cells in yellow are required. The cells in green um, are required if they're applicable to what had been filled out in other columns. Um, so in this photo, using the, the green cells as the example, you would be entering the units into the appropriate affordability level, which is what the column, the various columns represent, um, and then leave the rest blank as appropriate. Um, some new additions for table A, there are two columns that are asking if a project requested uh, a density bonus and if that density bonus was approved. And then another column asking about the status of the application. So for example, approved, pending, disapproved, withdrawn. Table A2, um, you'll be reporting projects that completed entitlements received a building permit or obtained a certificate of occupancy during the reporting year. If there was no entitlement, you still report on this table. Um, the same properties, um, the same properties might be included in both table A and A2. And RENA credit is given based on the building permit section of this table in the workbook. Um, you can include projects from previous years, but it's not required. Um, and only enter the unit numbers in the applicable portion of the form. If you enter a unit number, you will be required to enter a date. Um, so you'll enter the number of new units. Um, and if there were units demolished on the property as a part of the project, enter the number of units demolished or destroyed in the demolished slash just destroyed column. So for example, if a duplex is demolished to build a fourplex, you'd report all four of those new units and then report the two units that got destroyed um, in the separate destroyed slash demolished column. 
this is a change from previous years that um, we is intended to make the form easier to, to complete this time around. And if you select um, below market rate non-deed restricted, um, you're going to need to provide an explanation for how that was determined. Um, for example, by looking at comparable, comparable properties, something like that. We um, have an affordability calculator also on our website to help um, out with that. Um, and I'll drop that link in the chat as well. Um, and then also to note for something to count as a unit, it must have an individual cooking and eating space. If communal cooking spaces are the only option in a given development, then those units are group quarters. And so that means that um, home key projects that have been converted to have kitchenettes can count as individual units. Um, several new columns have been added to table A2 that must be completed only for projects that were granted a density bonus. They request additional information on the number and types of incentives granted to the project. Um, and so at that point, I'm going to pass over to Josh. All right. Thanks, Eric. So we're going to be moving over to tables B and C. So for table B, this provides a summary of total permitted units reported by the jurisdiction. You shouldn't need to fill out this table as the information auto populates from information provided in table A2 and from previous APRs. To properly populate, be sure to enter your jurisdiction and the year in that start here tab that Eric mentioned earlier. If you notice any errors in this table, please reach out to our team at HCD as you will likely need to update past APRs and submit them to our office for our records to update. Table C covers sites which have been rezoned due to a program in the housing element or as required by no net loss law during the reporting year. Don't include any sites that have been rezoned in previous years. If the table doesn't apply to your jurisdiction, please just leave it blank. As Eric said, do not enter not applicable or NA, just blank. All right, jumping to tables D and E here. Table D reports the status of implementing all housing element programs. This table is required for all jurisdictions and must include a separate entry for every program in the housing element. Now, we understand that the formatting of this table sometimes causes difficulties. To make filling out table D easier, you may want to import entries from last year's form and update the implementation status, as Eric had mentioned earlier. If you do run into any issues, please feel free to reach out to our team and we can provide you with some guidance. Table E reports commercial development bonuses approved during the reporting year. This form likely won't apply to most jurisdictions, so we'll probably leave that blank as well. All right, table F is for reporting units that have been either rehabilitated, preserved, and acquired for alternative adequate sites. Alternative adequate sites is a provision of housing element law that allows jurisdictions to get credit for preservation activities and reduce the number of sites identified in the housing element. Table F has two sides. The left side is to, for you to share information only and doesn't tie towards credit towards your arena. This section of the table is unlocked and we recommend that jurisdictions fill it out just so you can have it for your own records and allow you to keep track of any rehabilitated and preserved units. The right side of the table applies if the jurisdiction used the alternative adequate sites option in the housing element review and has units to credit towards arena. If you think this applies to you, please contact HCD as additional documentation will be required and our team can assist you in completing the form. Table G reports on the locally owned sites that were included in the housing element sites inventory and that were disposed of by the jurisdiction. Table G likely doesn't apply to most jurisdictions. Again, a site must meet three conditions to be included in this table. It must one, be a locally owned site, two, have been included in the housing element site inventory, and three, have been disposed of by the jurisdiction. Table H was added just last year due to changes enacted by AB 1255. So this table requires that local jurisdictions provide an inventory of all locally owned surplus, exempt surplus, and excess land. If your jurisdiction has locally owned surplus land, you are required to report the APN address and a few other fields that are shown on this slide. 
The summary tables auto-populate with information on both the projects approved using a streamlined ministerial process and the number of applications submitted. The summary tables are only there for your own reference. They're gonna auto-populate with information that you've already provided and they can be easily printed for your own records. An important thing to remember is that the totals in the summary tables are counted based on the dates provided in earlier tables. For example, building permits will only be counted if the year the building permit was issued matches the reporting period for that APR. If you notice that the totals aren't adding up to the right number, just check to make sure that you've entered in the correct years. If you see any error in this formula, contact HCD. If you are the recipient of a LEAP grant, you are required to report on the status of that grant to in the APR. The task described here should match the tasks described in your LEAP application. The one thing to note is that you should only start reporting after you've executed a contract with HCD. I know we've talked about this before, but really hammering it home again, the most common reason that APR submissions fail is due to missing information. To ensure all required information has been entered, we have conditional formatting in the form, which can help identify areas with missing information. Anything in the form that is required will be highlighted in yellow. Anything that is green is only required if the fields apply to your project. So for example, in table A2 shown here, once an APN is listed for a project, the required fields, in this case, the street address, unit count, and tenure, become highlighted in yellow. The section in orange is highlighted in green because it is only required if you've issued an entitlement during the reporting year. The Finish Here tab contains additional tools that may assist you in completing the APR form. The first tool is a validator, which runs a check of all required information in the form. The validator creates two files. One file is a copy of the APR with problematic cells highlighted, the second is a list of problematic cells with the exact cell number which contains the error. The second tool helps format table A2 for printing. Since table A2 has so many columns, printing on one page isn't easy. So this tool will create a workbook with four tabs, one for each of the reportable activities and one with the project identifier information. The third and final tool is a date checker. This will highlight in orange dates which occurred outside of the reporting year. Now you can leave these activities in the form, but to ultimately get credit for those units, they must be reported on the APR for the same calendar year. And we've already been over this twice before, but how are you going to submit your APRs? Well, there are two ways to submit your APRs. First, HCD has an online system that allows you to upload the form yourself. If you don't know your username or your password, please reach out and we can send it to you. You can also submit your 2021 APRs via email to apr at hcd.ca.gov. Please make sure that you send an Excel workbook attachment, not a PDF. And as previously stated, you will also need to send the housing element APR to OPR. So please email the completed Excel workbook to opr.apr at opr.ca.gov. All right, some final reminders. All 2021 APRs are due by April 1st, and HCD is here to help. If you run into any issues during the submittal process, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our team is actively monitoring our email inbox, and we are more than happy to assist in any way that we can. We're really excited about the collection of this data, and we recognize this is an intensive process. Just like all of you, we at HCD are working hard to adapt to the new requirements which have been set forth by the legislature, so we really appreciate all of the work that jurisdictions are doing to provide this data. Thank you all for your time today. If anyone has any questions, we'll be happy to discuss more during the q and I'm gonna hand it off to Tom to facilitate that discussion. Hi everyone. Hey. Yeah, thanks. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, been uh, in the chat trying to uh, answer as many questions as possible. Um, so yeah, happy to answer them verbally. Um, does anybody want to kind of tee them off to me or should I just go through them? Yeah, Tom, let me go ahead and tee a few of them off. So 
Um, we have a few upvotes for some of the general plan APR questions. And then I just wanted to highlight that um, you both of the, you and I did answer several questions in the chat. Um, so let me just go ahead and just provide a quick overview for folks. So um, there's some confusion about uh, the required sections of the general plan APR. So I just want to go ahead and um, clarify that for folks here. We have some 12 upvotes on, on one part of the question and 10 upvotes on another part of that same question. So the general plan is not new. Um, it has been um, a requirement for at least charter cities since the 70s. And um, it, uh, the law changed in 2018 to now require all cities and counties in the state to submit a general plan and a housing element annual progress report. And so the law has since focused more on the housing element annual progress report and the APRs for the housing elements have been more and more technical and uh, they have been more formatted and there's templates for them. And the general plan APR law, it hasn't focused on being as um, uh, requirement specific. Uh, there are general contents that we suggest that cities can incorporate into their general plan APR, but there is no set format for the general, a general plan APR. We see general plan annual progress reports that are sometimes you know, as large as 15 pages and sometimes as large as 400 pages. So it really varies and it depends on the local jurisdiction um, in terms of what, what you need to, to report on for the general plan um, APR. And so we have a cover sheet that we request um, in order to make it easier for us to track, you know, the, the submissions. And so we, we strongly suggest that, you know, your contact information, the name of your jurisdiction, the reporting period, and then the date of the presentation um, by the local legislative body. Um, we strongly suggest that you include that information into a cover sheet. It's not required by law, um, but, you know, it's just basic, you know, abilities for the this, this state to basically track who's uh, reporting on things. And then, you know, um, the general plan contents are really just any measures associated with the implementation of the general plan. Feel free to be very detailed and granular or provide summaries of, of some major ways the general plan has been implemented. And we get this question every year too. Even if your general plan is currently undergoing an update, we still require an annual progress report. Give us some information about um, when that update is expected to be complete, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, some of the priorities for the local um, decision making that have been made, right, um, and implemented during the past year, some, um, you know, the extent to which your general plan complies with some of the guidelines, right, how are you reporting to local tribes, how are you complying with, you know, environmental justice, how are you complying with all of the new planning laws um, that affect your general plan, so, right, so these are all things that we suggest that you report on for your general plan APR. So I hope that covers it. I know there was a specific question about, is a memo okay? The format is really up to the local jurisdiction. Um, so, you know, a memo would be okay if that is what your local legislature um, allows for. So I wanted to go ahead and hand it over to Tom for several of the housing element APR questions, which were asked and, and not yet addressed. So go ahead, Tom. Uh, sure. Um, so let's see here. Uh, there was a question on, let's see here. Let's just stop or start the top. Um, how can one report units gains if no construction or top and occurred exactly? Example, project room key or project home key units. Um, so no permits, there was no building permit. There was nothing like that that in a project room key or project home key. Um, uh, just contact contact us at APR at hcu.ca.gov. We'll dig deep into the specifics of the project. Um, would hate to see a, a project like that not being included on the APR. So um, you know we'll 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 figure something out um, outside of this meeting. Um, we have an executed LEAP contract and submitted for reimbursement in 2021. But have not received reimbursement. Uh, yes, so you would include that on the leap table. If you have not received uh, reimbursement, you can just put zero uh, in that um, uh, reimbursement amount. Uh, I believe that's the 
Oh, wait. Um, oh, you have not received it. Yeah, yeah. Just go ahead and complete that. I think, um, you know, just go ahead and complete the leap table with the task, the award, the amount that you've requested reimbursement on, um, and the status, any other funding, um, that should be sufficient um, for that. Uh, okay, yeah, the permits. Um, so, you know, there's, 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 so the, so the accounting of um, how you get credit for things in the housing element differs a little bit from how you get credit for, for things on the APR. So there's provisions in housing element law that specifically state that uh, you get credit for any unit that you've permitted after the start of your uh, arena projection period. So your arena projection period, I think for you, um, Ayala, was, um, you know, that June 30th, July 1st date. Um, so you can get credit for all of those units on uh, through your housing element. Now, when you report on your APR, that, that reporting, that table B um, that you're seeing is a report on the housing element planning period. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, and that's why we built in the cutoff um, as the start of your planning period date. Um, so, and then there's, and then the, 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 the accounting around SB 35 is also a little different. So um, it, it does get complex, but I think the housing element team was probably talking about the, the, your projection period start date, as you can get credit for that. The APR is really just focused on that housing element planning period. Um, so AGUs do not get reported on table A anymore. Um, if the AGU did not require planning approval, uh, uh, so if it didn't require a conditional use permit or anything like that, any type of uh, planning review or approval, uh, you don't need to put that uh, ADU application in there if it was just the application for the building permit and nothing else. Um, don't put it in table A, but you would, you would continue to uh, report that unit in table A2 uh, once that building permit is issued. Um, how many revisions to DP? I'm not sure about that one. Um, if you have not requested a reimbursement for LEAP, then, then do we need to report? Uh, so if you have not, yes, you still need to report. You just put zero in the amount that you've requested reimbursement for, for that activity. Um, Do we simply put zero units? Um, so for table A question, um, no, you would put the number of units that the project was proposed to include. Um, you, you can leave the um, amount of units approved. You can leave that blank. Uh, so you would leave that part blank, but you would leave, you would still put the number of units that the project was proposed um, in that um, section where it has you list them by affordability. Um, and then you, uh, for the uh, amount of units approved or, um, or disapproved, I think just leave that blank. Um, and then, yeah, indicate the application was, was withdrawn. Um, for table D, uh, yeah, so uh, good question on table D. Um, as far as like making the, the APR, I guess, more, you know, as up to date as possible, include programs for, for your most recently adopted housing element. Even if you adopted, let's say, you know, during the second half of 2021, um, still include those new programs in table D. If for some reason there was like some, some, some major program that you implemented from your previous housing element, like let's say you finally did a rezone, you implemented a rezone program, or you know you may maybe made some other change to your zoning, zoning code or or your zoning map. Then um, you know you could probably uh, also include that program. But a lot of the other programs by that point are probably going to be completed, um, so you know probably not necessary to to report that. But also keep in mind this is a report to your legislative body too. So you know. Um, you know, you may want to put the, you know, all the information that you might think is relevant for them. Uh, please repeat, 
leap only funds after are implemented. Um, just fill out the leap table um, with the same information that uh, you included in your leap application. So describing your tasks, the amount you're requesting for them. Um, if you haven't received, or if you haven't requested reimbursement, just put zero. Um, the rest of it should be fairly straightforward. Um, cutoff date for the planning period starts. The cutoff date. Cutoff is the date the planning period starts. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, it keeps kind of scrolling. Um, yeah, so, so the APR is a report on the housing element. Housing element covers the planning period that has a start date and an end date. Um, we built in some, some logic into table B where it will look at the, the date that you issued the building permit um, and then it will uh, give you credit for all the permits issued. Um, if you're still in the fifth cycle, it'll give you all the all, it'll give you credit for all the permits issued before the end of the fifth cycle. If you're in the sixth cycle, it will give you credit for everything that you've issued after the start of the sixth cycle. Um, SB 35 is like is, is is completely different, and it's it's sort of based on um, whether or not your planning period um, ends dirt, you know, before July or after July. Um, so really um, it's its own separate um, animal as far as um, calculating progress towards SB 35. Uh, demonstrate how to print a macro. Um, it's just a button that's in the finish here tab. Um, it only works on table A2 and it will split it, it, it will create a new file and we'll split it into four different tabs and you can print each tab individually. Um, the other option to print is um, using the online system, our, our APR system and um, uploading the APR and then you can export a PDF and that will print on regular, you know, eight, eight and a half by 11 uh, paper. Um, it might be long, but um, you can print everything and, you know, then once you have it in PDF, you can, you know, play around with it in, you know, Adobe or whatever, um, if you only want to print certain pages. Um, yeah, report everything, up, report leap, um, just put zero in the amount reimbursement. Um, if you haven't uh, requested reimbursement, will our prior permit data be automatically transferred to the new form? Yes, your prior year permit data will be automatically put into the new form, uh, into table, uh, into the lookup table that feeds into table B, and there is a cutoff. Um, so everything with permits issued before the end of the fifth cycle, you'll get credit for the fifth cycle. Everything after, you'll get credit for the sixth cycle. Unfortunately, table B only displays one cycle at a time. So um, if you want to see both cycles, just reach out to us and we can, um, we can provide you that data. Um, we don't require the resolution, um, you know, however, you know, feel free to send it. Um, that's, that's fine. Um, and, yeah, to submit a, a correction or update to a past housing element APR, just, just contact us at the email. Um, you can submit an update or a correction to a form at any time. We can supply you with your previously submitted form. You want to make changes to that, you just do that and then send it back to us. Yeah, and I just want to go ahead and be cognizant of time. We're at 2.59. So thank you so much, Tom. Um, and the rest of the HCD team, Brianne and Alyssa, everybody for, for um, doing a great job answering folks' questions and presenting. And thank you also to the audience for attending and for answering all of the, um, asking all of your questions. I'm hoping that this provided a lot of clarity today. And uh, we will be sharing the slides, the, the uh, recording of the presentation. And we're gonna look at um, trying to send some of the questions as well at, because that was requested by a few of you. So. Um, and feel free to contact, you know, the wonderful staff here um, as you as if you have any additional questions about your annual progress reports. Um, thanks, everybody. And I hope that you have a good rest of your afternoon. Um, and yeah, hopefully we will see you next year.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.